Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Germany, episode number 41. We're pretty close to bringing this series to a close, which is a funny coincidence because my Advanced Tactics Gold series just ended, so we'll have some new series time um, very shortly. Anyway, um, things have really, really switched around. Um, instead of being blockaded, we are actually blockading England, and you can see Great Britain has what they they considered two power points, two like ship points in Northern Europe. So that's definitely not like their whole fleet because we noticed already that they do have a fair number of ships and they have a fair number of ships also being built. But uh, when it comes down to the total battle cruiser and dreadnought um, fleet for all the capital ships like that, yeah, we're we're at a big advantage. So. Let's push our advantage forward then. Oh, good. Okay, I don't think we need to do these raid on coastal shipping. I, I don't like those. A convoy attack is much more appropriate, and we since we don't see any enemies there, we'll just... Okay, well, it didn't work out. <laughs> huh, could one of their dreadnoughts really have made it all the way over there? I don't doubt it, and my dreadnought in the area is only the LSAS class. Those aren't the strongest ships, they're still only, they're like half the displacement of my Deutschland class. So I'm just gonna decline this. We are gaining victory points for blockading, but that's more, the more important thing there is that we should be raiding shipping, and then on top of that also, um, we should be getting uh, the benefit of raiding their ships with our, you know, just our general raiders. So there should be a lot of pressure on the, on Great Britain. Let's see, it looks like we're about to run out of money, so let's figure out what we should do. This is the best. It looks like these two ships are very unlikely to see action in time. That's another two years, so what I'm going to do is resume them at a normal pace. Normal pace, and I will even halt. Yeah, honestly, of the two, the battle cruiser is less important, so let's halt the construction of that one, which will keep us afloat for another month or two. Why does he have... Oh, yeah, he has serious concerns because some reason I went negative still. Alright, so this is what I was hoping for, this hardship and food shortages in Great Britain. We're still sinking uh, their submarines, but they... It seems like they have an infinite supply. And they're still sinking some of our ships. So it could do a convoy attack. This shows us with eight compared to five. I, I mean, this is the big thing here. They only have five light cruisers. Okay, we only have eight, but they only have seven destroyers and we have 33. Hmm. But let's accept. Okay, this is good. We can start racking up victory points just by <laughs> forcing them to decline battles. Good. Okay, well, um, everything's still looking good. We're still blockading them. I think they have a few more ships back now. Yeah, so 142 to 77 power points, though, or ship points, whatever we call them. It's not that uneven. You know, it's four dreadnoughts and four battle cruisers versus five dreadnoughts and one battle cruiser. So, it's, I mean, it's eight to six total, but they have the advantage in terms of dreadnoughts, which, if it comes to a toe to toe fight, should do a little better. Okay, so let's uh, halt this other Deutschland class. And. That didn't help our monthly balance, so I'm a little surprised by that. I guess what we'll do is probably not accelerate the construction of this ship. In fact, we'll put it on halt. Okay, good. So that, well, we need to do a little bit more just to get our funds out of the red. So let's just halt this construction for one month. Okay, so... We highway, we, we highway. <laughs> ah, well, that's just a minesweeper anyways. So they're, they're still sinking ships. So every, I think every month we've sunk a British submarine. Okay, so we've sent the battle cruiser to intercept a British raider. This is fun. Yeah, let's do this. This is fun. Assuming, of course, that we are going to be victorious. I'm assuming that, one, we're faster than them, and two, not only that, but we're also going to be... Uh, much superior in terms of armament. 
So let's go squad max. I don't think there's any one-on-one -on -one ship that Hindenburg doesn't stand a good chance of beating. Even a Dreadnought, it should stand a reasonable chance of defeating. So we're going to do it. We're going to... Actually, let's not even turn towards it. Let's just let the guns sing their song right away. Especially because they are coming at us. Okay, what we could do is pop forward and then pop away again. Yeah, this is good. So now we can get the full broadside off. Um, we'll go down to 23 just to make it a little easier to hit them. Obviously, the thing we're worried about... Oh, wow. So immediately we're getting some decent hits on them. One thing we're worried about is these eight above uh, water torpedo tubes. So after a few more hits, which we already got 214, I mean, that's already devastating. We're going to start our turn. Turn away. Okay, wow, so that was extremely quick. <laughs> that was extremely quick. Good, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy a nice quick battle. Okay, so leave this scenario just uh quickly sank one of their light cruisers and onward onward ho just see again yeah they are recovering more of their ship points but I think our destroyers and our light cruisers are actually giving us a a leg up because the just the the capital ships the battle cruisers and dreadnoughts are very similar Okay, so the British invasion of We Highway was defeated. So I guess they counter-invaded? Is that how I read that? Did not sink a British submarine this time. Uh huh. Cruiser action. Well, we stand to win in the cruiser actions. Okay, we'll still keep accepting these fleet battles. And here we go again. Okay, so I'll, I'll, this might be the last battle of the war be honest I mean you can see even just in terms of ah shoot it's about to be nighttime I should have looked at the, the details for the battle a little more closely so the fact that it's almost nighttime means I'm not very interested in fighting this battle so what we'll do is probably not end up fighting this one because even though I have a huge torpedo advantage and we even were starting to get more luckily lucky with our torpedoes we don't want to oh well, this is not a bad situation for us. Maybe we just charge headlong and see what, how much we can get done before nightfall? Probably. Okay, uh, this is, I don't know, it might be more trouble than it's worth to try to get this battle going. Let's get these guys to sink back into line ahead, which they'll have a little problem doing at first, but that's fine. And then obviously we need everybody down here just to go squad max. I'll leave them on their current course, which seems good enough to me for now. Obviously we want to get these four dreadnoughts involved. If there's real fighting to be had, um, that's very important. This is Nuremberg. I think this is the Dresden class, is it not? No, it is a Danzig. Okay, so these guys are expendable again. Yeah, Danzig, Danzig, and Stedden is Danzig. Okay, yeah, so we have an expendable line of light cruisers here. These look pretty small, so I'm guessing they're destroyers, but right behind the destroyers is probably the big ship, so we shouldn't get too confident. All right, let's progress. Oh, they're moving down. Oh, that's even better. Let's also get these guys to stop their... Scouting, yeah, good. Same with you. I'm gonna have to go back up and switch the direction. I thought that they'd be moving south to north, but they are moving um, from north to south. So, and all that going on, squad max, squad max. Okay, so we want you to switch this way instead. Now let's see how that works. Actually, what we could do, if we want to be really cheeky about it, is pinch them in. So yeah, let's do that. Let's force them, let's kind of route them to the south where my battle cruiser fleet will be waiting. Oh, I didn't even notice these guys. And that's a Zabes class, so yeah, we'll run them this way. Let's just make sure that they're in line ahead. They are, good, okay, good. 
Everything's set. Let's keep going. This might be their scouting fleet, though, so at the same time, it's questionable whether we should be engaging too hard, um, because we do want to make sure that we're in good position if we encounter their main fleet. They only have their one battle cruiser, so our scouting fleet is much better than theirs. But if we lose contact with them, ah, well, nighttime is coming very quickly. If we lose contact with them, we probably just abort the whole operation. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, let's see. It's tough to say what we should do. If we get everyone to go exactly the same speed as our dreadnoughts, it's not the worst thing in the world to just continue on this course. And I think we'll do something like that. We're gonna lose. We're gonna lose the light cruisers to AI control, but I'm just gonna let that happen slowly. Yeah, there it is. It's already happening. <clears throat> so we have. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that it was a three distribution and a one distribution. I mean, that doesn't actually even make sense to me, but it's fine. Okay, we sighted another ship again. Let's just stay with it. These are expendable Danzig class, so. It wouldn't be terrible for us to engage close range with our destroyers and our light cruisers. And I do believe this is their big ship. So, yep, this is their fleet. Okay, um, good. Let's make sure that everyone knows to launch torpedoes. How do we want to do this? I guess let's turn these guys in, and hopefully they regroup in time. Let's get the Gobin to slow down a little bit just so that... Oh, are these guys detaching? No, I think I'm just sending the destroyers on the wrong side again, but that's fine. Yeah, so let's do something like this. These guys are good in the direction they're heading. Okay, here we go. So we're about to engage. Our lines are folding into each other. Torpedoes are being launched. That's very good. Of course, what I want to see. Not enough torpedoes, if you ask me. <laughs> So they haven't quite peeked into the sight range yet, but they're getting there. Yeah, and big nighttime is closing soon, so this will be a short engagement. If we're lucky, we can just pick off a few things. Even just a few destroyers would be nice. Yep, this is going to be a very close engagement, so... Could get very lucky. All right, let's see what's going on here. So we're, we are attacking their wear class. That's uh, just the modern, same as all the modern destroyers. We're attacking their KO class, their wear class. We have one of ours, which is taking a pounding, but we have sent out a barrage of torpedoes towards their Indomitable, which is pretty low. They might not have too much torpedo protection. Well, we'll I mean, we'll yet, we'll yet to see <laughs> if any of these hit. Oh, okay, one hit and another barrage is coming out. That's good. We're also hitting it with 14-inch guns, that's even better news. So let's make sure we're getting our broadsides off there. I'm pretty sure we are not. Um, yeah, we aren't. So let's turn away enough that we can get the broadsides off. Otherwise, let's get these destroyers to discourage the wear class from launching torpedoes, which is certainly what it looks like she wants to do. She's taking a lot of hits anyway. Ah, it looks like the Indominable is going to avoid some of our last torpedoes. That's fine, we'll continue to curve in for two reasons. One, we're going to continue to destroy their destroyers, hopefully. And two, it's not bad for us to continue to try to launch torpedoes at the Indominable. If we're able to sink the Indominable and then just back away, I'm completely okay with that. Got hit by two more just torpedoes. That's a really good... that's really good. Unfortunately, some of our um, destroyers are being really silly and launching torpedoes at destroyers, which, I mean, if I could give a standing order not to launch torpedoes at destroyers, I would. <laughs> but that's uh, unfortunately not a command I can give. This is uh, not, a not a complete real-life 
<laughs> Admiral sim simulation. So. Okay, yeah. Well, we are smoking their their destroyers as well. Still getting those odd 14-inch hits off. The Indomitable did fire its medium guns, which are what? 5-inch. Okay, so we are taking a few 5-inch hits. Have to be a little careful about that. But, I mean, obviously this is a good start to the battle. Very good start. And we're even getting our light cruisers from the other battle group engaged, hopefully, very quickly. Lots more hits. The Indomitable is getting hit. Um, let's just see what it says. It says she has heavy damage. She might already be sinking, if we're, I mean, to be totally honest. What I'm going to do is turn the light cruisers to help out with the destroyers a little more. All we have over here is the Zebes classes trying to ward off, like, four, I mean, five even, destroyers. And they might need a little help. So I'd prefer the light cruisers deal with that while the destroyers deal with the torpedo runs. Yeah, we're getting a lot of hits off on the Indomitable. She might even be... She only has one weapon which is active, and it's the worst one for her to have active. Her center line. I mean, her uh, midship. So lots of ships are uh, dead in the water over here. That's really good to see. Looks like we're going to be able to turn correctly, and that might even give our light cruisers a chance to launch their port side torpedoes. If they want, it's up to them. I've never been able to tell them when they should actually launch those things. We're not playing on captain's mode. If you play in captain's mode, just to show this, I've shown it already, but you play in captain's mode in the realism setting, and it does allow you to manually force ships to launch torpedoes, which, I mean, that can be a good thing. If you want to control torpedoes, I know there's many a time when I would have been like, hey, Nuremberg, now would be a great time for you to launch torpedoes. In fact, I'm not even sure. That might be too close. I don't know if the torpedoes would arm in time. Actually, I'm not sure what the arming mechanism was. I think it was just contact for these ships, so yeah, yeah there's no arming time for that. Alright, so yeah, we have to be a little careful. We're getting some turret damage on the Stetton as well. But more importantly, we're making our way back for all these... Uh, whoa, is one of our ships like... These guys are creating a lot of smoke. Okay, ah, oh, that looks good. Another hit on the Stuckard. So that, uh, we're distributing the damage evenly among all these ships. Is this guy ready to go? Oh, yeah, he's back on his feet. That's good. And now we have lots of torpedoes still left with these guys. Main target, even the DD-47 has got, has correctly targeted the Indomitable. Hopefully that means she'll start launching her torpedoes. Slow down to 28. We know the Indomitable can't move that fast right now. One, it probably, okay, technically had a top speed of 27. I didn't even see this turret until it went black, but we know that it had a technically a top speed of 27, but that's probably long ago before it got um, really just ravaged by torpedoes and by our 14-inch shells. It does look like it's slowing down a bit. Okay, three more 14-inch shots. No more torpedoes being launched, which I'm a little sad by. Yeah. So we have to be ready to turn away very quickly with these battle cruisers if we encounter the main fleet, which is actually why I should get these destroyers into a better position. So we're starting to launch some more torpedoes. That one looks like it's going to hit. I can't wait. Oh, good. We did. Yeah, so it's dead stop in the water. Let's um, pull around to the... Let's um, maybe a hard to starboard, then hard to port, so we can bring our... Um, port side torpedoes to bear with the destroyers and it looks like we're in good shape with all these guys I mean even the Kohlberg is coming and finishing up So let's get the Nuremberg just to go and protect the battle cruisers once more Since we don't probably have too much to fear from the destroyers here Okay, now let's turn you back this way. That's good. Yeah, okay, there's probably a sinking ship already so what do we do? I guess since nighttime is coming, winter is coming. Nighttime is coming, so let's just turn away and we can draw this battle to a close. We'll probably just let AI control take over. Yeah, I'm 
I'm hopeful that these destroyers are either sinking already or let's see if we make a run back maybe we'll send the Kohlberg this way the Dresden this way we just want to try to finish off as many of them as possible let's get those coordinates together even get our battle cruiser to maybe run through a few of these I know it's a little risky but um, it would be nice to make sure we sink it sink those guys okay and this is where things start to go a little bit worse as far as AI control goes. Uh, I think everything's going to be fine, though. Good, we got there fast enough to hopefully launch some torpedoes. We're still raining hell. Oh, what was it? I was launching torpedoes. Good, I thought it was avoiding torpedoes, and I was a little worried. Alright, so let's get these dreadnoughts out of the way just immediately. We've already succeeded so far in this mission. Let's go back to maybe like 18, pretty slow, and just move away. Move away from port. We don't need to do anything fancy like go raid for, for ships or anything. Um, taking the battle cruisers, well, is job fit well done. Good, another hit, another two hits. We're pretty confident that this ship is not going to survive. Five torpedo hits. Yeah, we'll detach the ones that are not able to keep up. Lots of hits, I mean, it's it's obviously going down. Okay, good, so let's go ahead and send everybody away. Good job. Well fought battle, and uh, an easy kill, basically. So we'll get these guys to go maybe like 21, just until they catch up with the other fleet. Oh, we still have AI, um, we still have the torpedo mode on. <laughs> so our ships have made another run. Okay, we sighted an unknown ship which is not good. Oh, good. That's just one of the sinking destroyers. I was really worried there. <laughs> okay, let's turn off this torpedo mode. We never even engaged it with our... Yeah, we never even engaged it with our dreadnoughts. Okay, we're identifying things incorrectly. Come on, let's just head home. Well, that's unfortunate. Good, now let's go, eh, maybe even 17, we can slow down. Point being here, let's just mosey on out. And yeah, we can probably go ultra fast. Okay, so we have to wait another 600 minutes, <laughs> 10 hours before this mission's over, but that's fine. At ultra fast speed, Shouldn't take too long. <sighs> That's probably a good time to bring this episode to a close right at the end of this one. Uh, mission accomplished in all regards. And on top of that, it's 25 minutes in. Yeah, we, we didn't engage the main force. And the good news is that taking out that battle cruiser means that the next engagement will be without a scouting fleet from them. So it'll just be their main fleet right away. Okay, they pulled into port. They did have all uh, six dreadnoughts here, but this is nice. We just pick off the battle cruiser and then move away. I like it. We were, we were also able to sink three of their destroyers, which brings their already limited destroyer count even lower. Just good stuff all around. Okay, so another 5,000 victory points. I'm surprised it's only 5,000 victory points for a battle cruiser, but those are pretty old. 27,000 tons, I think it was. So, not bad. And do we... Yeah, we didn't really take any damage with the ships, so... We had one, one of our light cruisers needs one turn of repairs, but that's it. Okay, this guy is... Let's put him back. Let's get... Uh, maybe two... Oh, I do like the idea. Let's get two of our Danzig classes to... Raid. So they're still building some heavy cruisers. Not that we really care. 10,000 tons is not significant. So we're still sinking the British submarines, but they're still fighting back. All right, so now we have convoy attack stuff. Hmm. Let's see. 
it does not give you an idea of what time of battle is. I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something, but yeah, it doesn't say time of battle. Hmm, do we want to engage in the same area? It's pretty close to their port of Cork. Let's decline the... Ah, okay, let's accept. I was hoping that they would decline it. Alright, a fleet battle up here. This is perfect. We want to take this. They decline. Okay. That's probably how things are going to go. Maybe we'll... Ooh, good. The British nation is rebelling. Yeah, the French ships. Well, it's not really important. Close that. I noticed actually we have a big budget now. So, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll take a cruiser battle. Oh, no. No, we won't. They won't let us take anything. Okay, convoy attack. Way up in the north. Way up, way up north. Very cold waters. Hmm. I mean, the convoy attacks with the victory points of 50, I'm imagining this is just going to be cruisers, or really it's probably going to end up being destroyers. It's just not necessary for us to fight such a silly battle. Alright, so since it's a convoy attack and we have light cruisers, I will accept this one. They decline. Good. So we're still blocking the enemy. Well, let me just put some of these guys back onto construction, especially the ones closest to being um, constructed in time. Maybe these two. This one also. No, not yet. But, yeah. And then, uh, we'll just end this turn. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow, so fantastic. We're actually able to take control of one of the one of their prizes. Well, there's so much to choose from here. It's interesting. But I think what I'm going to do is take Ireland. It's kind of a, something akin to what almost happened in World War II. I mean, there was, I guess not almost, but there's an idea. Oh, wow. South Africa is value of 25. How, how do you get control of these? I guess you can't. They're colonies, but not... It's not feasible to take them. Yeah, but the fact that we can take Ireland, I mean... The Germans will eat themselves some potatoes. And I like that. It's in our home waters. We don't have to defend it with any extra troops. We'll do that. Lots of ships being returned from retirement... Um, internment. Okay. Well, actually, that brings us to a funny place where the war is over. And that means, I guess, we'll bring the series to a close. So I had a lot of fun in this series. It was really interesting. Um, still learning some of the game mechanics every now and then. Something catches me by surprise. Uh, but this was a, a lot of fun. And I don't have to really repeat that too many times for it to be convincing. You can just look at the fact that I made over 40 videos for this. <laughs> so that's really the telltale sign that I was really enjoying it. Which uh, means we get a fresh start, a new a new series to begin. Two new series, because like I said, I just finished my Advanced Tactics Gold playthrough. So, um, I guess that's it for us. Germany is successful. Let's go ahead and resign, and we'll show the official results. Um, before we do that, let's just look at the World Almanac and see what else could we have done. Well, we brought our naval budget up to almost on par with Great Britain. Still greatly behind the USA, who their industrial um, progression gives them pretty good budget towards the end of the game. But we did, we did well, considering this was a historical budget. We started with, like, I think maybe a third of the British budget. And now we're finishing with, you know, maybe about 80% of it. So we've done really well. And Great Britain's budget has been increasing the entire time as well, so... Japan's done really well, actually, if you think about it. They brought themselves up to just about half when they were at le like a third or less of Great Britain. Anyway, as far as um, big ships remaining, obviously a fun opponent would have been to go up against the United States after this with 19 dreadnoughts. But, I mean, we had our choice between Great Britain and USA. But since I talked up Great Britain and they're kind of seen as the, the dominant naval force for this time period, I think we made the right decision to go after Great Britain. Okay. Um, yeah, then I'll go ahead and resign this one. And it cannot be undone, so we're, sh we're sure. A summary of events during the tenure of Admiral Tortuga. Yes, it should have been maybe Tortugets. <laughs> 
for the Tirpitz. Um, anyway, let's see. I guess I only saved, so this is the point of saving major battles. Ah, okay, very good. I finally understand it. When you save these naval battles, they actually appear on this list, but, um, yeah, so we fought a war against France, then Russia, then Japan, then Russia, <laughs> and then Japan again, and then we go off the 1930 scale. Somewhere around 1932, I think, this war began. And it only continued into 1933, so um, very successful, though. Let's see, this is the budget. So yellow is uh, the most difficult one to take advantage of. Oh, this is fleet tonnage, sorry. Um, so even at the end of the campaign, oh, this is until 1930. So I guess, unfortunately, we can't see how devastating our war with Great Britain was, but uh, we probably took them down to about our level, so probably dropped their number of ships by half. Economy, uh, yeah, so this was, we started very low compared to Great Britain, and unfortunately the scale doesn't start from zero. <laughs> That's really not a good thing. I, if I was critiquing this graph, I would, that would be the first thing I'd say, you should start your scale from zero especially if it's only starting at 10 going to 60 already. But anyway, that's not important. So we see that my, overall my budget was just always increasing. In fact, it looks like it increases more in between wars than it does. So this is a nice jump after a war. The jumps after is probably from acquiring colonies, but there's some speculation that it's better to actually not take colonial holdings, which increases your, um, the reparations is not a colony. It's just um, an increase to your budget. So some people have speculated that that's better. And here we go, summary of ships lost. So we can kind of tell how Great Britain did here. Um, in our war with them, I don't remember how many ships we lost. Was it three dreadnoughts maybe? But they lost 12. 12 dreadnoughts and eight battle cruisers. That's just insane. Um, over the course of the war, um, they lost 147 convoy ships. Now we lost 208 too. I don't know how many of that was from Great Britain. We did have to lose a lot of light cruisers over the <laughs> over our our tenure as admiral. Anyway, it's fun. Um, so this, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, stay tuned for I don't know. I might do this new Atlantic Fleet game next, or uh, maybe another series on Under Rule the Waves. Maybe I'll give it a little break. Um, one thing that'll help me decide is your comments. So leave a comment if you have anything. If you made it to this last video and followed me all through the series, I take your comments very seriously because, um, gosh, you're the, if you've made it all this way, you're really a trooper and um, I feel some kind of loyalty towards that. <laughs> so anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.